hi guys welcome back to red african tv in today's video we are going to be counting down black african female authors we should know this will be part of a series of videos with part two coming soon as always a disclaimer for this video this list is in no particular order of hierarchy but rather our digital archiving exercise to celebrate black african excellence i hope you enjoy the video at number one, we have Obufe Florence Nwanzuru Ahu Nikira Nwapa Nwakuche, also known as Flora Nwapa. She is known as the mother of modern African literature. She was born in Oguta in southeastern Nigeria on the 13th of January 1931 and passed in October 1993. She was only 62 years old but managed to edge her name in history through her writings. She attended University College Ibadan in Nigeria, graduating in 1957 with a BA degree, and in the following year of 1958, she attended Edinburgh University in the United Kingdom, where she earned a diploma in education. Upon her return to Nigeria, Flora practiced as a writing teacher and administrator, she served as a minister for health and social welfare for the east central state between 1970 and 1971 during her tenure as minister she was responsible for rehoming over 2000 war orphans she then served as a commissioner of lands survey and urban development between 1971 and 1974 in 1982 flora received one of nigeria's highest honor the order of niger and then was also awarded the highest chieftaincy title by her town a title commonly reserved for men flora worked as a publisher of african literature and promoted women in african society post the civil war she formed tana press or flora nwapa company to publish african books this was the first indigenous publishing house owned by a black woman of West African origin, which published fictional novels. And she went on to establish Flora Nwapa and Co. that published children's uh, fictional books. Flora was a distinguished member of Penn International and the Commonwealth Writers Award Committee. She also held the position of President of Association of Nigerian Authors. Flora later assumed the role of a visiting professor of creative writing at the University of Magaduru in 1989 until her passing in 1993. She was notably responsible for recreating Igbo life and traditions from a female perspective in her 1960, uh, in 1966 through the publication of her novel Ifuru she became the first black female novelist to publish to be published internationally her novel was categorized as a feminist novel Efu was the first novel published by a nigerian woman in english she also authored idu in 1970 never again in 1975 one is enough in 1981 and women are different in 1986. in addition to the novels published Flora also wrote short stories and poems such as This is Lagos and other, and other Stories in 1971, Wives at War and Other Stories in 1980, and Cassava Song and Rice Song in 1986. Some other publications by Flora uh, included Imka Driver God in 1972, Mama Water in 1979, Journey to Space in 1980, The Miracle Kittens, and The Adventure of Deke, also in 1980. She wrote her last novel, The Lake of a Goddess, before she passed um, in 1993. Flora did not refer to herself as a feminist, but rather a womanist. At number two, we have Grace Emily Akinyi Ogot. Grace Ogot was born on the 15th of May 1930 in Kenya's central Nyanza district in Butere near Kisimu. She attended schooling in Ngia Girls School and Butere High School. She then went on to train as a nurse in Uganda at the nursing training hospital and served as a midwife at the St. Thomas Hospital for Mothers and Babies in 
London, England. She practiced as a nursing sister and midwifery tutor at Masenu Hospital and then and then at Student Health Service at Makerere University College. Grace Ogot also held the role of scriptwriter and broadcaster for the BBC Overseas Service and then hosting a weekly program in her mother tongue, Luo, on Voice of Kenya Radio as well as on television. She wrote for the East African Standard newspaper as a columnist in the paper's Viewpoint section. She started publishing short stories in English and in Lua in the 1960s and was one of the first African women to have her fictional short stories published in 1963 titled The Year of Sacrifice, retitled As the Rain Came. Her first novel was published in 1966 and that was titled The Promised Land. Other notable publications include a collection of short stories titled Land Without Thunder published in 1968, The Other Woman and Other Stories published in 1976, The Island of Tears in 1980, and her second novel was also published in 1980 titled The Graduate. She then published The Strange Bride in 1989. In 1975, she was named a delegate to the General Assembly of the United Nations and in 1976, she was named a member of the Kenyan delegation of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, better known as UNESCO. Grace was instrumental in the founding of the Writers Association of Kenya where she held the role of chairwoman between 1975 to 1980. In 1985, she became one of the first few women in parliament when she was appointed as the Assistant Minister for Culture and Social Services, making her the only woman Assistant Minister of the then cabinet of former president Daniel Arab Moy until 1993. Grace Emily Akinyi Ogot was known as a pioneer of female literature in East Africa, bearing ma- many roles during her 85 years as a, as a nurse, an author, a broadcaster, a politician, and a diplomat. She passed on the 18th of March 2015 and was renowned and will be renowned for her liberal depiction of African culture alongside Western inferences. At number three, we have Titi Nzangaremba. Titi was born on the 4th of February 1959 in Mutuko, Zimbabwe. She grew up and received her education in both Zimbabwe and England. In Zimbabwe, she attended a missionary school in Mature and in England studied medicine at Cambridge University. In 1980, Titi returned to Zimbabwe where she took up the study of psychology at the University of Harare. As a student, Titi worked as a copyright for a marketing agency and wrote a number of plays, some of which were produced at the university. In 1983, her patriarchy and the role the women are supposed gained to her international in recognition, challenging the oppression of women by Robert McLaren's theatre group post colonial Zimbabwe. In the play 1987, was then made she wrote into a play called Neria, in which tackled the topic of. Neria became the highest grossing film in Zimbabwe and then she went on to write the third one. Her first book was titled The Letter and that was published in 1985. She also wrote a short story with the same title which won her a second place position in the writing competition by the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency. In 1987-1988, she authored her world-renowned novel titled Nervous Conditions. 
it became the first no- novel authored by a black woman from Zimbabwe to receive both national and international accolades such as being awarded the Commonwealth Writers Prize African Region in 1989. To add to her being the first, she was the first black Zimbabwean woman to direct a feature film called Everyone's Child in 1996. In 2006, she published a sequel to Nervous Conditions titled Book or Not. Then in 2013, she published a trilogy titled Chronicle of an an Indomitable Daughter. Also in 2006, The Independent named Titsi as one of the 50 greatest artists shaping the African continent. In 2016, she was chosen for the 2015 Artist of Residency Program by the Rockefeller Foundation Bellagio Center. And in 2018, Nervous Conditions was listed on BBC's Top 100 Books That Have Shaped the World. She also authored This Memorable Body in 2018 that was shortlisted for the 2020 Booker Prize. In the same year, she was appointed the International Chair of Creative Writing for Africa at the University of East Anglia. She was arrested for protesting corruption of senior government officials in Zimbabwe, but released on bail among other probationary activities. In 2021, she won the Penn Pinter Prize. She has directed more than 21 films between 1993 to 2011. Titi is the daughter of Susan Zangaramba, the first black woman to obtain a degree in 1953 from the University of Fort Hare in South Africa in English and Latin. At number four of this list, we have Miriama Ba. Miriama Ba was born in Dakar, Senegal in 1929. There is no specific date of her birth found, but she is regarded as one of the pioneers of literature of the West African coastal French-speaking country of Senegal. Miriama attended the Ecole Normale for Girls in Rufsik, a city in Dakar, which was a teacher training institution for women. Mariama graduated in 1947 as a school teacher. She practiced as a teacher and education inspector for a number of years. She was part of women's movements that advocated for more recognition of women issues in a predominantly Muslim country with strong patriarchal roots. As part of her activism, she authored two novels that cemented her as a feminist where she critiqued polygamy and caste system in African life by examining how women deal with common challenges, aspirations, and she promoted liberal interpretation of feminism. She bravely wrote about her anti-polygamous opinions through her personal experiences and what she described as the abuse of religion by some men in order to further their polygamous preferences. She wrote So Long a Letter, which was published in 1979 and translated into 16 languages. It won the first NOMA award for publishing in Africa in 1981. It was named as one of Africa's 100 best books of the 20th century. And Scarlet Song in 1981, a novel about the defiance of love amidst cultural and societal differences. Although written with a feminist undertone, the unfortunate demise of this love story was attributed to the colonial mentality of one half of the relationship who was of western origin against the dominant african tradition of communism practices by the other half mariama passed away in 1981 when she was only 52 years old 
and that brings us to the end of this video as mentioned part two of the series of videos about black african female authors will be out soon i do hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot of something about africa and her phenomenal daughters who put pen to paper and bravely wrote african feminist or womanist stories from east south and west africa then to the world please do excuse any pronunciation where incorrect but thanks for watching we'll see you at the next one do share subscribe and like bye